Hey, Seraphin here, and today we're making bread with an ingredient that has 4,000 years of history. Not sourdough, I'm talking about chocolate. This delicious dessert is thought to have been consumed since 1900 BCE to 1500 BCE in Mexico. And while it's not typically promoted as one, chocolate is actually a fermented food. A lot of the rich and complex flavors that we associate with chocolate are a result of wild microbes from the local environment of where the cocoa beans are from. Interestingly enough, one of the species of microbes identified in cocoa bean fermentation has been baker's yeast, although it's probably a different strain of baker's yeast from what we use in our bread. Regardless, with this in mind, chocolate and bread make for an even more suitable pairing. Two delicious fermented foods combined into one amazing bread. The bread recipe we're using here is a tried and true Japanese milk bread recipe. It has a pretty high hydration, so we get a super soft and fluffy bread that blends perfectly with the chocolate. We've already talked about all the science behind all the ingredients and their amounts in a previous video, so make sure to check it out if you want to know more about that. This is going to be a quick, beginner-friendly, and absolutely delicious recipe, so let's jump right in. All right, we start by making the tang chong. So I'm pouring in 140 grams of boiling hot water straight into this bowl. Okay, 139 grams. Then I'm gonna add in 20 grams of rice flour and 75 grams of regular bread flour. Immediately mixing everything together. going to be a little bit stiff due to the rice flour, but as long as you keep working at it, it should be pretty easy to combine. Okay, it's pretty much good. I'm just going to clean off my spatula at the ledge of the bowl. And I'm going to set it aside and I'm going to cover this tang chong with this piece of cloth. We're gonna let it come to room temperature before putting it in the fridge overnight. So I'll set this aside for, for now. Okay, now we can get started on our pre-ferment and I've actually got all of the ingredients prepared at the side. This is a silicone mat just to prevent everything from sliding around. 75 grams of water, one gram of instant yeast, and 150 grams of bread flour. And I've got a nice medium-sized mixing bowl. I'm gonna start by pouring in my water, and then instant yeast, and finally the bread flour. So the hydration for this pre-ferment is pretty low. That's why I am using this scraper instead of using chopsticks or a spatula. Okay, you can already see it's starting to get pretty thick. We need to make sure that all of the flour is well combined. So I'm going to set aside this scraper just for a bit and I'm gonna knead it with my hands. There you go. Okay, it's in a nice ball like this. It's homogenous, we're done. I'm just gonna scrape down the sides just a little bit. There isn't really that much left. Clean off the scraper. And now I'm gonna cover it with this silicone cap. We're going to be leaving this outside for about 30 minutes to 45 minutes, just for it to rise a little bit before putting it in the fridge overnight along with the cooled down tang chong. Okay, and now that the tang chong and pre-ferment are both done, they've spent their night in the fridge, we're gonna to get to making the final dough. It's the first thing in the morning, and I've got my stand mixers bowl here. I'm gonna immediately add in the tang chong my spatula, it's nice and cold. Get everything out of the glass bowl. Then I'm immediately gonna add in my pre-ferment. Smells so good. Okay. Now I'm gonna throw in 70 grams of milk. 
23 grams of sugar, just regular granulated sugar, then 6.5 grams of salt. Now, just before adding in the bread flour, I like to give this a good little mix. Just with my scraper, I'm just trying to break up the pre-ferment as well as the tangzhong. All right, and after all that's done, I'm gonna add in 135 grams of bread flour. Great, now we have one ingredient left, which is 25 grams of butter. I'm just gonna set it to the side, let it soften, while we first mix this for three minutes in the mixer at a medium speed before adding butter and then mixing until full gluten development. Now, just before this goes to the mixer, I'm gonna use my scraper and just kind of incorporate the flour into everything else. <laughs> When we're done with that, I'm just gonna clean off my scraper. And off to the mixer we go. All right, so mixing is taking a bit longer than expected and I think I found the cause. It's a very cool day and the pre-ferment as well as the tangcheng were fresh out of the fridge. So, well, everything was cold, the milk was cold as well. So it seems like mixing is gonna take about two to three more minutes longer. We can also tell this by trying to do a window pane test on the dough. You can see that it's breaking apart quite easily and the breakage isn't like a smooth, clean shape. It's jagged, rough edges like this one here. So that means the dough is not done yet. We've got to continue mixing it for a bit longer. Okay, we're back at the table. Now I'm just gonna scrape down the bowl. I'm really good at scraping. And I'm gonna scoop the dough out of the bowl. Move the silicone mat aside, drop it down. Okay, so I'm just gonna knead it a little more. You can see that it's basically not sticking to the surface. It's very good. That looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna do one more window pane test. I'll just scoop this part off. Yeah, that looks a little better. Okay, now that the dough is done with its mixing, we're gonna continue on to the next step. So I've got a glass bowl here. I'm going to oil it with a little bit of vegetable oil. A little more, okay. I'm gonna line the sides. I'm also gonna line my hands. 
And now we're going to scoop up, and basically round the dough into a boule. Nice, dense, pretty dough. I'm going to cover it and we're going to leave this to bulk ferment until it roughly doubles in size. It should take about 45 minutes to an hour, but that can vary depending on your room temperature, so make sure to keep an eye on the dough. All right. All right, the dough has doubled in size, so we're gonna continue on. I'm gonna move it to the center. Just get my scale ready here. Okay. Now with a bit of flour on the work surface, as well as the top of the dough, you shouldn't need too much. I'm just gonna punch down to degas. And then I'm gonna take it out of the bowl. And now I wanna weigh the whole thing first to get a number. 692, I wanna divide that by eight. Okay, so that comes out to about 86 to 87 grams. All right, now to divide it, I'm just gonna roll it out into a nice long log like this. And then we're gonna divide into two, divide by two again, you get the point. Okay, let's divide by two. Divide that, those pieces by two. And divide each of these pieces by two one last time. Wonderful. Eighty-six grams. It's perfectly eighty-six grams. It's nice. Okay, so we've divided all these pieces. I'm immediately going to move into pre-shaping them. Super simple. Very easy. I just want to round them into nice little bowls. Pre-shaping is important, especially if you're dividing, because it adds a little more strength to the dough, and it also gives us an even base to work from. So we won't have any wonky shapes if you pre-shape properly. And then we're going to cover the dough balls and we're gonna leave them to rest for about 10 minutes as a bench rest. In the meantime, we're going to be preparing our baking pan by aligning it with some nonstick coating. This is really a very quick step, so I'm just going to grease down the bottom and make sure to get the sides as well, not get stuck to it. Okay, and we're done. Just need to wait for this to relax. All right, so it's been 10 minutes. The dough should have relaxed. I'm gonna take a piece using a bit of flour here on the surface just to prevent sticking. I'm gonna pat it down. I'm just gonna degas it with my hand and then further degas it with this rolling pin, making sure we get rid of all those bubbles. So after we've rolled the dough out and it's nice and degassed, I'm gonna put it on the scale 
and I'm going to add the filling. So I've got here some dark chocolate chips. You can use any chocolate of your choice. And I wanna add in about like seven to 10 grams. Again, this is up to personal preference. Just make sure you don't add too much because it might end up spilling. All right, that's about eight grams. I'm good with that. And now I'm just going to pinch to seal it together. Making sure to really make sure that everything is well sealed. Roll it out one last time. And I'm gonna put it down here at the front first. And after we're done with all of them, I'm gonna arrange them into the baking pan. Okay, so I'm gonna arrange them into the pan the, the way I've arranged them here, so two by four. Let's do it. Put this one in at the leftmost. Just kind of packing them in together. They will grow and they will expand and everything will become beautiful and even. For now, we're just trying to get them into the right position as much as possible. <clears throat> okay. Wonderful. All right, so they're in the baking pan. They look great. I'm just gonna cover them. So we're gonna leave these to proof for about 45 minutes to an hour or until they roughly double in size. So that should mean they go a bit above the edge. All right, so while the dough proofs, I'm just going to make the topping. I've got 80 grams of chocolate chips here. I'm just gonna add in 20 grams of hot water. The goal is to just melt and sort of thin out the chocolate, making it into some sort of chocolate syrup, which we are going to drizzle over our bread. Again, you can use the chocolate of your choice for this. Choose something that you like to eat. You can also, of course, Put it in a bit of warm water, which I'm just gonna do because I've just got a few more lumps here that aren't melting because today is quite a chilly morning. So you can see the consistency becoming more and more liquid. All right, now I'm just going to pour the chocolate into this piping bag. Getting most of it in. Just to make sure everything's down, I'm gonna use this scraper, scraping down the edges. Okay, there we go. Just before we go on the bread, I'm gonna test it out here. All right, that looks pretty good. And I'll do a little heart at the corner. Okay, we've preheated our oven to 180 degrees Celsius and our dough is ready to be baked. So we're gonna bake it at 180 degrees Celsius on top and bottom heat for 20 minutes before turning it to bottom heat only and baking it until it turns nice and golden brown all over, which should be about another 10 to 15 minutes. Every oven is different, so make sure to adjust it to your circumstances. And it's done. All right, I'll set up my wire rack in front of it. Thank you. 
And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and bye.